everyone. Um, my name is Megan, and as you guys can see on these screens, I guess, um, I wrote, Lebanon is not in Africa. And yes, it's true. Lebanon is not in Africa. And you're probably wondering why some crazy girl is up here telling you something that you obviously already know. But the thing is, it's not obvious to everyone, and that's the sad truth. Uh, about a month ago, I went back to my hometown for spring break. My best friend and I, we have this tradition where we stuff our faces with ice cream, and then we go on this ridiculously long walk to kind of counteract the fact that we ate enough ice cream to satisfy like a 3,000 pound man, right? And we were talking about Lebanon for whatever reason, and all of a sudden, my friend switched topics completely, and she went on this long ramble about Sub-Saharan Africa and South Africa, and I was really confused as to why she changed topics. And then it hit me, and so I stopped, and I turned and I looked at her and I said, wait, do you know where Lebanon is? And she said, oh, yeah, 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 it's in South Africa somewhere. And outwardly, I was laughing, but inside I was kind of dying as I explained to her that, no, to find Lebanon, you kind of have to go up north a wee bit. But she's not alone. A lot of people do not know about um, these general facts about the Middle East. And just my interactions with other delegates, they've kind of experienced the same thing. Like one delegate, he's from Morocco, and he told me that when he tells people this, they think he's from Europe. And then another delegate, she said she was instructing one of her students, and she told him to name a Middle Eastern country, and he said Islam. So obviously, there is some sort of general lack of, and I'm not sharing these stories to sort of belittle anyone or to insult their intelligence, but there is a lack of knowledge when it comes to the world and specifically the Middle East, but that's extremely important because we have such a vital interconnected relationship with this region. And perhaps more important than knowledge sometimes is perception, because no matter how much knowledge or how little knowledge you have, you have these preconceived notions and these perceptions, and they really define how you look at something and how you interact with people and how you view things. And um, it's just perceptions can be formed based on what you know. So if you know nothing about the Middle East, then your perception is obviously different than someone who does. And I think that our perception of our two cultures is, here's America, and then here's the Middle East, right? And where we overlap, that's our commonalities. And it's just a very tiny overlap, because the only things we have in common are the fact that we like Facebook or falafel or something like that. But in reality, I think it's more like this. Where our two cultures, we obviously have our differences. I'm not trying to say we're the same at all. But when it comes down to it, we're all humans, right? And humans kind of want the same thing. We want to be loved and have a family and have an education. And we want to you know, spread the word and maybe have kids and then just live and die happy. I think that's what everyone wants. But the problem is Americans, we don't really see this because we just see five minute clips on the news and we think that the Middle East is full of people who want to kind of um, annihilate us, essentially, and terrorism. Those are the things that come to mind, and we don't see the beautiful people and the beautiful culture that it really does have. So I made this little equation. Um, knowledge plus perception, that equals your understanding. And while some people think that you, know, you gain knowledge based on what you perceive, and some think you perceive based on what you know, it's essential, you need both of them together to come to an understanding about something. And so if you increase knowledge, then it may not necessarily um, change your perception at all, but what it will do is it'll give you a broader idea as to what you can base your perception. So to get a better understanding, we need to somehow change this equation. And I think the easiest way to change this equation is to let people know and to educate them and to provide them with the knowledge as to which they can base their perceptions. Because better understanding, it leads to better policy making, it leads to better media coverage. And I mean, knowing is good, right? I mean, ignorance is bliss, but only for the ignorant person. I mean, I definitely don't feel blissful when I have to deal with someone who doesn't know anything. So it's extremely important that um, we kind of fix this. And while I don't have solutions for the problems in the Middle East, I think you guys really do. You guys are the future in that. 
um, I can help out in my own community, and I can do things to help you along with your process and with your journey, um, and hopefully we can meet a sort of mutual understanding somewhere along the way. And I plan on doing this by having technology, film, sort of intertwined with education. Initially, I wanted to focus mainly on film because film is so powerful. But then I work in a middle school and I realized how much students um, hate learning about social studies. It's really dreadful to them. It's awful. It's the worst thing in the world. And if I can sort of enhance education and sort of bridge the gap between the Middle Easterners and Americans, then that would be doubly good. And more specifically, what I'm doing is I'm creating a web portal. And this web portal is to be used as kind of a classroom and textbook supplement within the class, but that's not exclusive. People can definitely check it out if you're not in a classroom. And it's composed of three main things. The first is general hard facts about the Middle East. So where is Lebanon, per se? And um, it'll have games and things to engage people, because kids at the moment are not engaged, and I think that's part of the issue. And also, I want to have these video shorts. Um, they'll be two to five minutes, and what they're going to do is feature the human aspect of the Middle East. I really want to feature real people with real stories, so maybe they will show us around town or um, talk about their lives and their family and their experience at university, because it really adds a human face. And when you can do that, it's much easier for kids to kind of relate and it also um, just humanizes everything, which is something that I think we're lacking in this Middle Eastern American uh, conflict. And last but not least, I want to have a platform for teachers to connect to teachers in the Middle East so there can be some sort of cross-cultural dialogue. Because at the moment, um, a lot of teachers, they don't have connections to people like you over in the Middle East. And it would be extremely beneficial for kids to see hey, you know, Omar over there and, you know, Jordan, he's just like me. We do the same things. You know, we all have the same dreams and they're kids like me. We like to play. We like sports. We like soccer. They can kind of bond based on their commonalities. And right now, teachers, they have enough things to worry about. So for them to go out and do this on their own is kind of asking a lot. And if I provide an easy way for them to just fill out a form and then I do the rest of the work, then it's something that they'll definitely take advantage of. And all of these things are designed to overcome the lack of knowledge, humanize the educational system with the hopes that there will be some sort of bond, and then also just enhance the educational system in America. So if you were asleep for the past, I don't know, five minutes of my presentation, this is just a quick little summary. Um, who I am, I'm Megan McConaughey, and I guess I need a title since I haven't graduated yet, and so that will be a fun fact expert. Hit me up if you want to know a fun fact. Um, what do I want to do? I want to create a web portal that contains facts, videos, and also provides communication tools for people within the Middle East and people here in America. When? Soon. That's extremely vague, but I kind of want to begin within the next couple years because there's all this energy right now. Um, I'm young, I'm meeting people, I know people, and also as I get older, my ability to pay, stay up past 10 o'clock at night is kind of um, dwindling away. And where will this work? I'm focused mostly on the Middle East. That's what I'm interested in, that's what I like, that's what I find fascinating, but this idea is really scalable, and it can definitely be expanded to other cultures as well. So maybe the Latin American countries, um, China, they have some censorship issues, but we can definitely work something else out. And then why, ultimately, I want to bridge the gap between America and the Middle East, and I think the best way to do this is through teaching children while they're young that they're not some scary, foreign, totally mutually exclusive entity. We share the same things. But what I need is you all. Uh, I really cannot do this alone. You guys are the best teachers. Um, I'm just some white girl with an interest in the Middle East, but what I really need is your stories, and um, I could provide a great platform for you to kind of get the word out there and teach people what you want to be taught about um, your culture. I don't know how to portray the Middle East as well as you guys do, so any stories you have, any connections you have, any critiques or advice, would just be great and it could really help me out and hopefully, um, I feel like this conference I've been 
receiving a lot more than I've been giving. And I hope that in asking you guys to give to me one more time, I can um, give back to you in the sense that I'm helping people in my community understand you all. And it can lead us to this, you know, rosy, cheery, sunny, happy world. Yes. So if you guys would like to participate or help me out at all, um, please feel free to contact me. And I beg of you, if you need help with anything, I can definitely, definitely help. So please email me. And thank you.